You see, Oda's Japanese through and through. He's, oh my God. Oda, stop, man. Think about for a second your fans abroad. Think about the people that love what you do overseas. Stop trying to set us up. The people in Japan, they don't care. It's, 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 <laughs> it's one of the mill activity over here. When they heard the news, they went psycho. Psycho. We have no qualms. In fact, we love this stuff, but overseas like bro. Oh, wallahi, he please order. No, don't do this. Why? Our dreams, our goals, our life ambitions ruin. Everything you know will be gone. Cause Oda decides to put a certain number in a certain spot instead of another number. I'm glad I ain't y'all. Game is game. Data books, favorite cards. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. They have good information about a lot of different things when it comes to the marine systems, when it comes to Blackbeard. We got some new locations and most of got some Vega Punk activity where the problem lies, but I'll get there soon enough because I'm gonna give a brief shout out to Order of the Library of O'Hara. We're going to be reading all this info from, though not everything because obviously all these things are kind of meh. They don't really have that much substance or value to them, but nonetheless, let's dive into it because it is interesting to find out more new details about the story. So without further ado, Viricard, Vegapunk, and Marine Activity, let's go. Viricard timeline of Vegapunk's life. 39 years ago, he is convened as one of the founding scientists of MADS, the Laboratory of Peace, which of course, given Caesar Clown and Queen and Judge's motives, peace was not on the table. 36 years ago, his discovery of the bloodline elements, DNA, is published in the WEN, then 26 years ago, he is arrested by the royal government who perceive their research as dangerous and Mads is bought out. Obviously, as a scientist of his note, he needs a lot of funds, a lot of money to do his research. So as long as the money is there, it doesn't necessarily matter where it's coming from. Now, four years ago, Punk Hazard is involved in a great explosion, moves his laboratory to Egghead Island. Three years ago, cuts his head and creates the Punk records. Two years ago, creates clones of himself giving birth to the six satellites. And as of late, zero years ago, started a worldwide transmission after Kizaru sent him into cardiac arrest. Now we do get to see some of these design sketches for Vega Punk that Oda had originally thought about. Uh, some of these designs are, you know what? Listen, man, <laughs> man, Vega Punk that we have now is pretty tame compared to Oda's original thought process for Vegapunk. And he actually draws what his skull would have looked like if he kept his brain, Punk Records, on his body. And he would have been, according to Oda, over a dozen meters tall. I believe based on the sketch, we're talking about 19 meters, but I'm not too sure. Basically, he's really, really, really tall at that cranium. And keep in mind that like an average giant height is 20 meters, 65 feet tall, essentially. So this man's skull and his skull alone is teetering on the height of giants. And and, <laughs> and we do see what it actually looks like in punk records, actually officially colored, and it's gnarly. Now this, we have Achir Oda sabotaging the Western fan bases for One Piece by giving us information about the satellite bodies themselves. So we have Vega Punk, zero one, shock of the good. March 22nd, birthday, physical age is 30, born two years ago, though they have the mind of Vega Punk, so a 65 plus year old man, essentially. So shock got relatively tame, but here we have over here, Lilith. Lilith, number two, the evil. Of course, female, birthday, of course, March 22nd, like the other Vega Punks. 24 year old, physically, born two years ago, she has a height of 204 centimeters, which essentially is like six feet, eight inches tall. Oda loves his NBA numbers. Even the WNBA gets a lot of love. I did not get the vibe at all that Lilith was 6'8". And we've seen her run around next to the Straw Hats, Usama Company, and even currently, when I see her along the track crew in Elbath, I'm not getting 6'8 vibes. Oda, what? She's 6'8"? Shock the same height too, but I do not get that sense at all from Lilith. Though many men will say, you know what? That's all for the better. That's all for the better. All the Vega Punks have the same blood type. They have the same birthday, obviously being clones of Vega Punk. Edison, number three, is physically 18 years old. Again, born two years ago at a height of 100 centimeters. Cute. Pythagoras, same thing here when it comes to the blood type and his birthday. 
also age 26 physically, born two years ago, obviously. Atlas for her, the same thing for the same stats for her birthday and for blood type. And she is age 16 physically, and her height is 729 centimeters. So she is just a few inches, like I wanna say four inches taller than Kaido. So when Luffy does compare her to Kaido in height, he's being very precise there because she is actually the same height, a little bit taller than Kaido. And when you look at one of her design sketches, I swear to God, one of her designs look like Jane Jetson, the wife of George Jetson from The Jetsons. So I get the feeling that at some point when he was thinking about doing these character designs for the characters, he was hearkening back to various shows that he may have seen when he was younger and maybe there was a Japanese Jetson that he did peep when he was a kid, but he decided to go away from that. That's my guess there. However, we do not have to guess about the details of one Vegapunk York because y York has a lot of fanboys and fangirls, more fanboys and fangirls. It is what it is. However, it's gonna probably be a Japanese exclusive thing only moving forward because same birthday, same blood type, fair food hamburger, very American, love to see that. Her height, mwah. She's almost 16 feet tall at 482 centimeters. However, age is the same thing as Atlas, 16 physically born two years ago. This, is where a lot of dudes are like, bruh, particularly non-Japanese fellas, like, bruh, what is this? What is this? Why? Por que it's your order? Senor, por que? Why you have to do this to us? This is not the fun. It's your order, why? Por que? Por que? Por que? Really? We're obviously given the laws and the culture in Japan. They don't give a damn. It works for them, but it does work for a lot of Western nations. Some European countries, fair enough, but where I'm at in America, this, 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 this is a no-go. This is, uh-oh, red card. Red card! It's a foul! No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait. On the plane. So obviously, when you go online, you see the comments about, you know, this reveal. You'll see Oda is this, Oda is that, trying to summon Gogeta to try and take down Oda, not realizing that Gogeta has no power in the land of the rising sun. What a lot of folks don't realize, because obviously me, I am seasoned in the game. I've watched anime for a very, very long time. And mind you, not just shonens, but comedies, rom-coms, horrors, you name it. I know it all, and I've seen it all. When I was growing up, a lot of times you didn't have access to internet stuff right away, like you do nowadays, where it's one for one. So when you got something from Japan, it was always edited in some way because a lot of the sexual humor and sexualization of Japanese characters, it does skew on the younger side. So whether it was Dragon Ball, whether it was Zatch Bell, uh, something from Sailor Moon, even let's say in comics and manga, like the old Pokemon one, the Electric Tail of Pikachu. The English version got heavily censored from the original Japanese version. And you'll see this time and time and time and time and time again. And then once internet started to really pop up more and more, and you had a lot of these things displayed bare to you from Japan, it was like a culture shock. It was like, bro, holy hell, they do not give a damn. And they don't even care about the age. Or they will do things to kind of skew the age and the physical body. Everyone that watches anime, even the newer fans, have heard about the stereotype of the thousand year old vampire little girl. Even if you think you've escaped, they will always find a way. And a Chiro Oda is no exception to the rule. When he gives York that age, he thinks it's probably a-okay, who really cares? And obviously, when you have the mind of a 65-year-old man, but you were born two years ago as a clone, now this winds up being another version, another weird spin on the 1,000-year-old vampire little girl. So as anime gets more and more popular and you see more newer anime fans coming to the scene, or a lot more folks get more up in arms and more irritated that Japan would do this and that, when it comes to skewing sexualization for younger characters. And even though I'm not a fan of this, I do not like it, I do not approve at all when Oda does this, absolutely not. I understand that when you're consuming content, entertainment from another culture and country, there are going to be benefits and there are going to be downsides that are going to clash with your own worldview. The Japanese guys will make fun of us Westerners for being so afraid 
for being so skittish for something like this. Like you'll see things online where they'll say, Americans don't fear guns, but they fear lowly, lol, you know? So all that to say is that, yeah, there is this cop out of every Vega punk is 65 year old mentally. But when you have York in these certain positions in the manga and in the anime, and in the anime, they even added impact frames. Like, bro, what? <laughs> Most dudes across the world saw this and thought we were in the clear. We were good to go. And then the Vivera card started boxing out for Japan and Japan alone. It gives an American man a migraine. Oda keeps on selling dudes out constantly. So moving forward, lads and ladies, mainly lads, be very skeptical. Walk on your tippy toes as if you're always on thin ice because you never know when a Vivera card is going to drop and the floor is gonna fall underneath you. And we don't have the parachutes like the Japanese guys do. No. Now after this, some things here and there that caught my attention. Number one, Rob Lucci, we get his details, age 30, but he has confirmed armament and observation hockey. No conquerors hockey. And what also caught my attention, like hardcore, hardcore, is that when you look at Oda's sketches for Rob Lucci's, Rob Bababucci's design for his awakening, some of these designs don't have the Hagoromo scarf. That's in actually, most of them don't have it. If not all of them, maybe some do, but it's hard to tell. The older at one point in time, I feel like it was better to have only a few mythical Zoans or Zoans have the scarf around their shoulders and other ones wouldn't attain that even though they were awakened. Because remember, the impelled down Jellybee's guards, they are also awakened Zoans, but they do not have scarves around their necks. Though to be fair, they are improper awakened Zoans. And right now, the five elders, they might be Zoans themselves, or not too sure, because as far as we know, they're not different users based on the name of their abilities. You have someone like Yamato, who is not, as far as we know, she is not an awakened different user at all, but she has that scarf, not only in hybrid form, but also in full Zoan form too. People thought that Kaido was awakened, but Kaido doesn't, <sighs> Kaido is, <laughs> oh God, that topic is still spicy to this day about Kaido being awakened or not. But Kaido, as far as you know, is not awakened and he has no scarf either. So the Hagamo aspect of the awakening of his own ability user is still to this day, one of the most interesting and weirdest concepts. And I would say also inconsistent in some ways too, for sure. But I do still find it very interesting that Oda was genuinely considering not having a scarf on Rob Lucci when he had his powers awakened. On a quick note here, apparently Hattori is 20 years old. He's four or five times the age of the average Prigen. So you, you know he's busted. In fact, if Hattori was actually low key, a different user in disguise, that would not surprise me. <laughs> like Morgan's, that would not surprise me. Then we have Stussy, who is confirmed to have the Bato Bato Normi or the Bat Bat Fruit. H36 confirmed a user of observation and armament hockey, but nothing about this fruit is mythical. There was that theory that she was a mythical zone user, but no, it's just the regular battle battle or the regular bat bat fruit. The genuine article of the ability compared to Batman in Wano Country. Yeah, she's the real deal. And that dude's a phony. He merely adopted the darkness, but she was born in it. Absolute. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it, molded by it. Next, Santo Maru, who was born in a country in the Grand Line called the Kintoki, which is, I think, in reference to a mountain somewhere in Japan. So that is a new country, and he has armored hockey and observation hockey, no conquerors hockey. And he also has a cross guild bounty set at 500 mil. So in the same camp as the vice admirals, even though he's a Marine headquarter science corps squad captain. But keep in mind that because he's a Marine headquarter, military personnel, he's bumped up compared to the regular non Marine headquarter military personnel. So we'll see more of this later on in the video, but these are some pretty good details on Sento Maru. Next is Kuma, age 47. His height is absurd, 20 some odd feet of just madness. His race is Buccaneer slash Pacifista. So Pacifistas are a race, a mechanical made race, but Buccaneers, they have some sort of unique ability that we don't know of just yet. Oda has to dive into that. His epithets of the tyrant, pacifist, but then superhero, 
That warmed my heart. Oh, that warmed my heart. Oh, Bartholomew Kuma. Hobbies, traveling, fantasizing, writing letters. Ooh, mm -hmm. Man, yo, Kuma, this flashback in the anime is gonna hit hard. It's gonna make a lot of people cry repeatedly, repeatedly. It's gonna be painful, man. God damn. And of course, the Niku Niku, the Paw Paw Fruit, Armor Hockey, and Observation Hockey confirmed. And then now we move on to Guinea. Guinea is a revolutionary army Eastern Corps commander that we knew at the time of death, 39 years old. Blood type is F. Origins of Grand Lion in the Porco Kingdom. An absolutely crazy name. Favorite food is meat on the bone. Good stuff right there. And then Bounty, 190 million berries as she was a Revolutionary Army Corps commander. Now, what's interesting about Kuma too is that Kuma still has confirmed armament and observation hockey. I'm assuming that applies even to this day because we saw when he punched Saturn, we did see hardening on his fist. And then this coincides with the Seraphim. So the Seraphim are all age eight years old physically, born two years ago. Their favorite foods are similar to their progenitors, except for S-Hawk, because S-Hawk, he can only have <laughs> grape juice and not wine. <laughs> Considering how he's eight years old physically, so Oda, Q right there, I see you. Their exact birthdays are unclear, but what apparently is clear is that they have armament and observation hockey. We haven't seen them use it in any way so far in the story, but apparently they do have it. And then you can argue, okay, fine, Kuma, who is mostly machine now, that has lost his will, that has lost his humanity, a man that has lost his memories, you can argue in, in, in many respects is dead. In many respects, he's dead. He still has armor hockey. So if he still has armor hockey, why not the Seraphim? There was a debate, but hold on but they were made in a test tube and they are somehow genetically programmed to serve orders. They have machine parts in them, all that stuff, but they still have the will to utilize hockey. Again, we haven't seen it yet. And to be fair at a baseline, every living thing in some way should have armament and observation hockey, but it feels kind of iffy there because again, they're essentially living weapons, but they're living so they can have Hockey. Again, it was debatable about them having hockey or not. They haven't shown it at all in any way. However, since Kuma could use, you could argue, okay, fine, they can use it too. Vivid Cards also confirmed that Monkey D Garp is a Conqueror's hockey user. No surprise there, honestly. And what should be no surprise too, is that right now, right now, the other hero of the Marines, Kobe, has confirmed no Conqueror's hockey. Right now, right now, in the future, Will he get it? Probably. When in the future? Who knows? But right now, even after the honesty impact, he does not have Conqueror's Hockey. His bounty also 500 million berry bounty. And a few things here or there that are interesting, like for example, he is 18 years old. His job, if he was a Marine, will be a nursery teacher. And his country of origin in the East Blue is the Satsurazu Kingdom that translates to Let's Fish Kingdom. Crazy names. Though I'm surprised that Oda doesn't use a lot of the kingdoms during the Reverie. Helmepo, interesting here. Marine Headquarter Lieutenant Commander, so his bounty is only 100 million. Armament Hockey only. That's interesting. Armament Hockey only. Though someone in the comments section under that post did make a pretty good point. Because in chapter 903, we see him talk to Kobe about how he couldn't sense that submarine, that torpedo, but Kobe could. So how good is your observation hockey, Kobe? But it implies that he himself also has that hockey. But according to the data books, he does not have that hockey. What? So Helmepo is in a weird spot right now, I'd argue. I would say that they probably made a mistake there, honestly, where he probably does have the color of observation hockey, just that right now, for some reason, it's just not listed. Hibari, though, does have both confirmed, and also her bounty is 200 million, because she's a Marine Headquarter commander. And apparently, on Ardor, her ocean of origin and blood type are the same as Kainu Sakazuki. So, of course, a popular theory out there is that she is a Kainu's daughter. We'll have to see about that one, obviously, in the future. Kujaku, she has one around a vice admiral like Sentomaru at 500 million berry. But again, Sentomaru is not a vice admiral. He is a Marine Headquarter Science Group Division dude. She is a Marine Headquarter Rear Admiral, but she warrants a bounty similar to a Vice Admiral, which is interesting at 500 million. Blood Type X, September 18th is her birthday. The fruit she has is the 
whip whip fruit and of course a user of both armament and observation hockey now prince Groose is the same thing where Groose. It's also at a 500 million berry bounty as a Marine headquarters rear admiral and sword member. His fruit is the, not the glorp, it's the gloop, gloop fruit. But what's also interesting here is that apparently in the past, Ottawa was considering giving him the cut, cut fruit. Like an attack version of Buggy's chop, chop. The chop, chop, you are in the pieces, but when you cut, cut, you can cut anything into pieces? Would it be a spin on the blade blade one like what Mr. One was? Das Bones? So he's in that right now and the clay is more interesting and we don't know if right now, if the clay clay fruit that he has is a Logia or a Paramecia. He did make guys that were logia is but they were like clay dolls. So is he himself like his own clay dolls? Is he also intangible like clay? Not too sure right now. But he does have, once again, also confirmed armament and observation hockey. We also find out that apparently Borsellino and Sakazuki, when they first joined the Marines 32 years ago, so around the time when Kizar was 26 years old, they were known as the Monster Rookies. Maybe in the Marines, their version of the Supernova. And when you go to his favorite card, Kizaru's, he has some pretty cool hobbies like smoking fucking meat, my boy. Oh, he's the grill master. Ah, oh, respect respect for the yellow monkey he also enjoys bananas two favorite food low bounty cross gill three billion barriers like every other admiral important there i think and observation armament he is not right now officially he is not a user of the conquers hockey no he simply has observation and armament hockey there are theories out there that he did have it but those theories are incorrect. You do not have it. And the same thing goes for my boy, Mr. All Day, Every Day, 24, 7, 365. Team Blackbeard is lacking in the Conqueror's hockey. His kingdom of origin is now revealed. The origin is Grand Line, the Shade Port. So it's a new country, a new kingdom. His motif is the red spider lily, a flower that symbolizes death in Japan. Those are pretty popular in Tokyo Ghoul too. Because the anime had him have the same lighting effects as Rayleigh when he fought against Law, the huge red bolts. Folks are like, yo, he must have Conqueror's hockey. We did a video on this too. You can see over here, boom, where the video is essentially me talking about how even the animators don't really know what's going on. They're just told to do X, Y, Z, and the other but they don't know if he actually has Conqueror's Hockey or not. Maybe it is Conqueror's Hockey, but right now it's not confirmed to be Conqueror's Hockey. Thick, huge, gigantic bolts. But no, 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 no Conqueror's Hockey confirmed for Blackbeard. So it's, I know it's annoying. It's, it's very, very annoying. But by the same time, I've criticized Oda relentlessly on him being unable to really properly define the hockey power system. This is part of the reason why the devil fruit power system is superior. It is vastly superior than the hockey power system. But I digress. I'm not surprised that BB is lacking on the conkers. And the same thing goes for our good old boy Kuzan. Kuzan, obviously a member of the Blackbeard Pirates, the 10th Titanic captain. Their foods are pretty neat, though he hates elaborate cooking. Like, let's say, Michelin star dishes were like they're very, very small and it's all these fancy ingredients like bro. He was the kind of guy that just grabs all that one go, boom, mouth, end of story. Keep it simple. Country of origin, South Blue, the Vespa Kingdom territory, which I believe is also new. And his bounty is under discussion at Marine headquarters. Ooh. Now you got my attention. So he could have a very spicy, a very a bit uh, spicy, spicy bounty. Order did drop a list of all the new kingdoms that we've heard in the River card so far. We have the Grand Line, Aoi Kingdom. That's Isho's homeland. Then we have the West Blue, the Soja Island, where Isho was recruited from to be an admiral after the World Military Draft. Then we have the South Blue, the uh, Taya's Kingdom. That was Aramaki, Green Bull's hometown. Then we have, like before, Mount King Toki, which is Sento Maru's homeland. Then we have the Grand Line, the Porco Kingdom, which is Guinea's. Oh, <laughs> the Porco. <laughs> Crazy name, bro. The Porco Kingdom, which is Guinea's hometown. They have the East Blue. We have the Satsuzu Kingdom, which is Kobe's homeland. They have the South Blue, the Vespa Kino Territory, Kuzan's homeland. And then finally, we have the Grand Line Shade Port. 
which I think is the idea of Blackbeard not being able to sleep at all makes you wonder. It makes me wonder now. The shade port Blackbeard's homeland. So just how there is a place like Ennius Lobby, the all day kingdom, the all day island. Is there a place that's always in like perpetual darkness? Let's say akin to the Florian Triangle. Mm. I'm a think. I'm a think. I'm a think. And I'm going to leave it on that note. There are minor details here and there about, let's say, members of the O'Hara archaeologist clique, or let's say things involving the girl that Jar wants to date. I guess the last thing that's like on a wholesome note here is that Mr. Nine and Miss Monday, the one that Zoro tried to take out for um, uh, racial reasons, well, their kid is named Nande, which in Japan means what day it is. So let me know your stance on the new Viver card info that Oda gave us. If you enjoy Boy's content, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell to join the notification squad. I'm gonna catch you guys and gals on the flip side.